Well, thank you very much, Ken Workington. Welcome, everyone, to In the Sulky Saturday Night Style. We are joined by the Green Hornet, Yannick Jingra, one of the top drivers in the sport. And we are going to start with the starting five, five topics we want your opinion on. Number one, earlier this year, you were racing at Yonkers on the weekends, only here on Thursdays. What made you decide to come back full-time, the Burks or Jeff Gurrell? Uh, a little bit of both, but mostly Burke. They, uh, you know, they had a couple of series final coming up where they had two in the race, and you know things weren't going really the way Ronnie wanted to go, and um, so he asked me to come back. And you know what? Whatever they want me to go, I'll be. You know, uh, if wherever that means. And you know, they've been really, really good to me. So. Uh, that's the way I did. And you are so loyal to them in most cases, but do they ever get upset if you pick off their horse for another horse? No, not really, and I really that doesn't happen very often, you know, but usually when I do, I'll call Ronnie and, get, and ask him his opinion, but, uh, they, um, you know, I'm loyal to them, but they're loyal to me, too, you know what I mean? Like, you know, through the years, they put me on a lot of horses, um, you know, I'm to the point now where if I, if I go to Yonkers or if I go to Chester, they'll put me down on all of them. Whoever has been driving him before doesn't matter, you know what I mean? So that's, that's a great hedge to have. And um, I just think it's, it's a no, commitment both ways, and it worked for both of us. Speaking of Yonkers, a handicapping question for you. They changed the distance to a mile and a 16th, more room before the first turn. Theoretically, the outside horses can get position. Does it make any difference, in your opinion? I definitely think it does, uh, especially for like you know a guy like Ron Burke that drive you no know, race a, whole, a lot of horses over there. Most of the time in, in those handicap races, you're getting handicapped the outside, and most of the time you just got to surrender. Before you used to have to surrender. Now you know you got a chance. I don't think it makes a difference as far as the way it finish, and no, I don't think it hurts the horse an extra 16, but it definitely gives the horses that had the six, seven, eight have a chance at the start of the race to get position. Speaking of Yonkers, when the Meadowlands closes March 26th, it doesn't race live again until May 7th. A lot of guys are planning to drive over there. Brian Sears, some of the other guys, you'll be back there. Who are the three toughest drivers in a stretch drive to get past or to hold off? Well, George Brennan, I, I would say Brian Sears is definitely uh, real hard to get by, and I'd probably say Tim Tietrick as well. Okay. Well, that's uh, three pretty good names right yeah, exactly. there. You know, they like, probably street. say the same thing about you, too. One last question. Pastor Steven, in your mind, is he the Hamiltonian winner book favorite, or is Man of Many Missions the horse to beat? I'd like to think that my horse is. You know, like he, uh, he went through every dance last year. He was real fresh at the end of the year. He's sound. Um, I actually been to the farm one time this winter to go look at him. He looked great. Um, and, you know, I, you know, if I had a trainer to pick, you know, to go with that horse, you know, you know I'd have two picks. It'd be Ron Burke or Jimmy Tactor. So I think either way, uh, no, having Jimmy on my corner, it's definitely a, a very, very positive thing. And then uh, I'm very happy to have him on my corner. Man, that's a tough position to be in, isn't it? Driving first call for Jimmy Tactor and Ronnie Burke, that pretty well means that you've made it in the sport. No question about that. Well, you know, like I just said, if I had two trainers to pick, they would be on top of my list. So uh, I'm very thankful that, you no, know, they both you know, wanted to use me in and, uh, uh, I'll be, I'll, uh, I'm committed to both of them. Let's talk about your drives tonight, Yannick. You were scratched out of the second race, but you're in every other event on the card. In the opener, you've got number one, Bad Ombre, your choice over the two in form. He raced back on four days' rest. Did that affect him last time out? I, I don't know if that affected him more than, like, no, he's a horse that likes to go, like, 52 and change 53. He comes home good. Uh, I think last week, you know, 51 and 2 might have been just a little bit too much for him. Uh, the rail definitely not going to hurt him. You know, he's had the outside, you no, know, pretty much every start. You no, know, it's hard to get position. So, uh, you, you know, he's a one-move horse. If things set up up front and, and, and you know, they, they go, like, 3 quarters and 24, 25, actually, it would help him, you know, versus 3 quarters and 23. But it's pretty warm tonight, and I'm sure the track will be fast. So uh, I don't know how that's going to play out. Now, the second race, you're a uh, Mount Talbot Redneck was scratched. Third race, you've got River Shark. He won in 152 last week. Let's roll in this stretch drive. What exactly happened between you and Brian Sears with presidential order? As we roll it out here, you're coming up. Looks like your horse will bear in and kind of get in tight quarters there. And Sears' horse actually kind of made a skip for a step. Well, you know, I, I thought I was going pretty straight. And it, now when they showed a the head-on view, you can see it. Like, I was going straight. Brian's horse was running out. And uh, the, he definitely, you know, his leg hit my wheel. But, uh, you know, I, I didn't think it was my fault. And, and there was a little bit of inquiry there for a second. Or they were looking at it, if anything. But, uh, no, thankfully I got st I stayed up, but I, I thought I was going pretty straight. What about River Shark tonight? You've got Mr. Massimo in there is awfully sharp. School kids has been good at Dover. To be honest with you, I was looking at this one all afternoon, and I, I really don't know which way to go. You know what I mean? Like, they, um, there's a couple of good horses in there. School kids, Mr. Massimo has been, I mean, I drove him the one time, but he's a good horse, and, you know, he can live on the outside. I, I don't know if today the two-hole behind presidential order, I don't know if that's the right spot, you know. So uh, I think, yeah, I'm going to have to play it by ear. And is River Shark headed for the Levy, do you know? 
I, I'm not sure, but I would assume so. You know, I, he, he's you no, know, he's real quick off the wing, and you know, he's a good horse. You know, there's no doubt about it. And you know, Mark likes to race him, so I'm sure he'll be racing in Alivia. Looking ahead to the fourth race, you've got number three, Big Rock Star, and frankly, this horse's form not real strong right now. You know, to be honest with you, last week he was good. You know, I, uh, I, no, I, I got into two, in a two hole behind David Miller, <clears throat> and he let um, David let um, Ron Pierce go with Mr. Hollowell, and my horse was really grabby, and he actually felt really good. But the minute I pulled, he just went straight back. Backward. But I mean, I think if this horse, you know, could be on the front or in a tool, I think, he, you know, I think he'd give a good, good account of himself. He wasn't as bad as the line looked last week, and no, I'm looking to, for. Um, no, it's not that tough of a bunch, I don't think, and so hopefully uh, it can work out a good trip. Talk about him being pretty grabby. Did you shut his hair off a little bit by chance, or did he just kind of lose his interest after that? I just think it's kind of horse that you know you leave and you no, know, that's what no Donnie told me last week. You know, he said no, don't show him too much racetrack. But you know, he felt good, and I gave him a chance, and obviously I should have listened to him. You know, I think if I said the three all, I had a, maybe I'd have gotten a check, but I don't think I shut his hair off. It's just a matter of attitude. Fifth race, you've got number six McClellan, your choice over uh, Best Not Lie. Hanover and Dash. Kind of a wild start to that race last week, huh? Yeah, you know, I, I don't really know what he did. He was going along fine and all of a sudden he just darted to the left. Uh, he, made, he made a little bit of a skip there and after that I was kind of stuck on the outside and so uh, I had to use him pretty hard into that win. And he's definitely a fast, fast horse, but uh, you know, hopefully we're going to have to be a little bit careful with him tonight, but uh, no, if things set up up front and they go decent fraction, that's one that can sweep him. Moving on to the sixth race, it's the uh, first leg of the four-leaf clover. You're driving code word for the Burks. I, this is some kind of nice horse, isn't he? I tell you what, he's improved every start since I've started driving him. But last week, he went a mile and a half. You know, I was out the whole way. Then uh, <clears throat> going into the last one, I took a shot at the Whiskey Pete. No, his or Pat's horse looked like he was you no know, struggling a little bit. But then the minute I got to him, he took off with me. And I kind of set it up for uh, all that glitter is gold. So, uh, I, I, I mean, he, he was very, very – actually, that was two weeks ago. But he was very good that night, and I'm looking – forward to a big performance again with him tonight. And really, there's no pressure since there's only one division. It's not like eliminations where you have to do well to make the series final. No, absolutely. You know, you don't want to kill him, but then again, you're going for 25000 So uh, the purse is good, and no, we're going we're gonna to race him. Seventh race, you get another Burke horse, number three, Final Flash. He's been close in his two starts here. Does he have enough punch to get past? Oh, I think he does. You know, last week he was kind of, no, I, I used him a couple times, used him to get position, then I remove him to the front, and he just didn't have enough in the stretch. You know, he's definitely a mile track horse. You know, he's improved a lot since Ronnie brought him here, and, um, you know, Marta Maxim, obviously, and just being a boy, they both won big, big trips last week. So uh, hopefully these two hook up, and maybe he'll play out for us. Boy, you used to have to beat Martha Maxine with Darlin's Delight. Now uh -huh. you're trying to beat Martha Maxine with Final flash. Exactly. In the eighth race, you've got number seven, Jetty. This was your choice over Blue Claw. I think you drove this horse for the Burks quite a bit when they had him. Yeah, I drove him a, a lot at Chester. He's a nice horse, sweet to drive, can leave, you no, know, as fast as a horse can leave. You know, he likes to get position and go from there. You know, they, uh, th that's the way he likes it, and it's probably the way it's going to happen tonight. It's it's definitely, you no, know, not an easy class for him. That's about where he belongs, you know what I mean? But uh, it, uh, there's a lot of good horses in there, so hopefully we can leave, sit, and Maybe you get lucky. In the ninth race, you've got number seven, Super 88 for Mark Ford. Your pick over Casimir Camotion. Nice old horse. The last two starts, though, you've had to use him in the body of the race probably more than you wanted. Yeah, but that's the way he likes it, though. You know what I mean? He's kind of horse that, you know, the faster he goes, he'll keep going. But if you go half and 58, he'll come back half and 58. I don't know why like it's like that. But if he, does, if he doesn't get going, it's hard to get him going from the 5'8 to the wire. Uh, I, I was really looking for big performance for him last week. And I, he disappointed me a little bit. You know, like he's a horse that's been all sore here and there, but he was really sound last week, and he just didn't have the poppy. No, I thought he would have, but uh, hopefully uh, he bounces back tonight, and that's, it's another drop in class, so uh, I mean, he's definitely, the, no, I mean, obviously, I shouldn't say the class of the field, because Casimir Commotions probably is, but he, uh, he definitely belongs in there. Now, Super 88, is that the type of horse when you take him out for the post parade and score him down, you know if he's going to be any good or not? Well, if you asked me last week, I would have told you yes, but I was wrong, because last week I didn't think he could lose you know, the way he felt in the post parade, and he, uh, he got beat, and you know, he finished eight, so uh, uh, no, I, I don't think he, that's the way it is. Just, you know, we'll see what happens. Tenth race, you pick up a drive on number two, Show Me Up with Brian Sears opting off. Looks like a pretty big hike up in class for him. It is, but I tell you what, I raced him a couple weeks ago at, um, at Yonkers, and he went a big mile. We went like 27 in the backside. You no, know, I, uh, I move into the, I go into the half, he cleared, and somebody came at me on the 100. And 
and uh, E-Race e really good. It's definitely a step up in class, but a mile in two minutes at Yonkers, you know, it's a mile in 53. So, uh, you know, he's okay that horse. You know, I think he's one-move horse, you know, that way. No, against this bunch anyway, I think he's a one-move horse. But, you know, there's stuff worse in there. Foreign Officer is a nice horse. Whiskey Pete's, you know, they're all nice horses. So things are going to have to set up for him for sure. 11th race, number two, tenant in chief for Sean Valley. You better win because Sean actually won a race driving last night, so he'll probably fire you if you don't. Well, that's what I told him after the wire last night, as I hope that the one I'm driving tomorrow is as good as this one, you know, but yeah, he's a good old horse. I've been driving him for six, seven years. Um, you know, he's not always 100%, you know what I mean? Like, he's got his days where he's better than others, and uh, hopefully tonight is one of those nights where he's real good. 12th race, number four, Rock in the House, class drop. Looks pretty good in this field. Uh, I mean, when I looked at the sheet, no, uh, the overnight sheet, I thought this horse would, you know, would be a big favorite in here, and, and I was, I thought it was my winner for tonight. But when I looked at the program, I saw that horse that Tracy Brainard just bought, and so I was like, you know, well, it's going to be a tough one. No, 50 at, uh, no, Pompano is a good mile. It's obviously, you know, a lot warmer and stuff, and I don't know about the shipping and stuff, but his line looked awful good. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to raise this horse, but he's no kinch. And Dry Galtz, that's one of those horses later on that's probably going to either win or finish 20 lengths back, either bet him at a short price or go against him. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know which no, which way he's going to go. Obviously, no, it's a big jump up in uh, in, uh, in class. I would, no, I would assume. I don't know. Uh, I don't look at the race in Pompano, but I would assume that it's this is a lot tougher. Moving on to the 13th race finale, number seven, Redneck. Outlaw horse is usually close, just doesn't seem to win much. Yeah, but, he, you know, he cheats a little bit. You know, he's had two starts now. I think, you know, it's tonight it's tonight or never, I think. You know, it's uh, a little bit of a su suspect bunch. You know, the three horse in there has actually been shuffled two weeks in a row, so uh, he's probably the horse to beat. But, you know, he's been okay at Redneck Outlaw. You know, like last week, you know, he paced real good at about, you know, 200 feet from the wire, and he got a little bit tired. But I think tonight should be a good night. Some candid comments and some great analysis on his drives tonight from Yannick Jindra. We do have one email question here. Which of the McDermott brothers, Kevin or John, talks the most? Well, they both talk a lot, but I'd like to listen to John a lot better than I can listen to Kevin. Kevin's a little bit annoying sometimes, but uh, if I had to pick between the two of them, I'd take John. All right, a vote for John McDermott from Yannick Jindra. Thanks so much for joining us. Best of luck tonight. Short time out. Dave Brower in the air chair to talk pick four. Don't go away.